We thank you, dear Lord. We pray for the ones that are traveling on vacation or wherever. We pray that you would just be with them and give them the rest that they need and that you would bring them back safely to us again. Lord, we pray for all of the sick. We pray for the ones that are in the hospitals, the ones that are, uh, have problems. We pray that you would just touch their bodies and heal them. We thank you for the ones that you have brought back to us, dear God. We pray that you would continue to watch over them. We thank you for this church and thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. We pray that you would just guide and direct us now as we sing and listen to your word. And we thank you for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's see. What's the next one? 476. 476. All right. Oh, you made me see. <laughs> 476. <laughs>
anybody here this morning? Uh, let's see. Um, Wednesday night prayer meeting. There's a question mark, so I'm guessing there are ways. So we won't have a Wednesday night prayer meeting. Um, July 30th through August 6th is Callie's trip to the DR with Uniontown Bible Church. I believe she has all of her support now, and uh, she's ready to go. So I'll uh, be in prayer for her uh, trip there. Um, as she goes to the DR, that hearts will be opened and that uh, they'll have safety as they travel and, and all those sorts of things. Um, August 13th is a church picnic at the Elders Mus. Uh, service starts at 10 a.m. Uh, bring a dish to share and invite some of your friends and family to come out to the picnic. Uh, August 27th is a Sunday spread. Uh, from early, 9.45. Uh, 1025 for some food and fellowship uh, before the service starts on August 27th. Um, stay tuned for the restart of the Olympian Club in August and the new women's Bible study. So we have those things coming up. Um, if you're interested in teaching junior church uh, during the service to some of our younglings on occasion, please see Dawn Walker. So we've been talking about starting up nursery and junior church again. So I'll see Dawn Walker about that if you're interested, and we'll um, discuss those things. Um, let's see, we're, we're glad to have Bill here with us this morning and continue to, continue to pray for him. And um, Ms. Connie, for her shoulder, not here this morning, but if you pray for uh, her recovery for her shoulder surgery, from what she told me, it sounds like things went well, but she'll just be a little while with everything. Healing up and, and that sort of thing. Uh, didn't have any other updates on our list of prayers at uh, this time. Um, continue to pray each morning at 7 a.m. We ask everybody to pray uh, for a pastor for our church. Continue to be in prayer for that. And um, was there any other announcements or anything that I missed? Yes? We have to pray for Tracy. <clears throat> she, her pet scan is on the 26th at 9. At Sinai, and her surgery is August 1st at 9. Okay, so uh, Tracy Hamilton, uh, she's having uh, surgery and a PET scan, and, and um, you know, she needs some prayer there. Um, do we know? Does everyone know? I don't think everybody knows. They, they found a spot of cancer on her again, so the doctor is very positive that he can get it all, but good. she has to go through the process. So she's a little worried, but she just asked. She said it was okay to say something in church, so. Right. So yeah, be in prayer for, for Tracy. Um, they, they found uh, cancer again, but they think it's something that they can handle, take care of. So just be in prayer for her. She hasn't had all the scans and everything yet to, you know, but you know, please be in prayer for her. So um, anything else? All right. I do have one more thing, oh, sorry. Go ahead, yes. Um, for the women's Bible study, if anybody has any suggestions, I need to figure that out. I mean, I'll be doing some research too, but if anybody has something that's on their heart, you let me know and we can talk about it. Okay. So, just know if you have ideas for the women's Bible study. All right. This time we'll have special music. <laughs>
Very well done, Jack. Very well done. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Give me a second here to get this up to more easeful standards for me. As you know, I'm a little tall, so not as tall as Hank, but. <laughs> What's actually funny though is my uncle Kurt, whenever he comes down with his kids, he always tells them what um, to our house that is, he always says, we're going to the land of giants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're running tall kinds in our family, so. But it's good to see everybody again this morning. And I trust the Lord will bless our time together. If you will turn to Proverbs 3, um, we're going to be working primarily from uh, Proverbs 3. Um, verses 5 through 7, and then we'll have one more verse at the end, but we'll be jumping back and forth a little bit with a couple other verses, but the title of the message this morning is Trust and Follow God. And it's something that all of us need to do, and it's something we need to do every day. This is something we have to constantly commit ourselves to in everything we do in our lives. So if you'll turn to Proverbs 3. And I hope that these verses are somewhat familiar to everybody here. Um, now, I'm including verse 7 in this because the fact that verse 7 fits so well with the first two verses. But I'm going to go ahead and read those first three verses here, and then we'll begin with prayer. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. Our Heavenly Father, we pray right now, Lord, that you open up our hearts and minds to hear your word. Lord, this is your word. We pray that we would grow in it, Lord, that we would take it in and commit it into our hearts and minds and into our lives, Lord. That we not be just hearers of the word, but doers as well. Open up our hearts and minds to receive your word. Let the Holy Spirit have free reign in our hearts. Bind and rebuke Satan, Lord. Bind your blood, Lord Jesus. That you keep evil thoughts away from us. That the world can be put away, Lord, as we look into your word. In your name, Jesus. Amen. So four things we're going to be looking at today. And I know it's a four-point sermon, but I'm not going to take forever with this. So just to clarify. First is trusting in God's will. Second, acknowledging God's will. Third, relying on God's will. And fourth, waiting on God's will. God's will for our lives is something we are always looking for. And it doesn't matter what stage of life we're in, what beginning of something we're doing or ending of something. God has a plan for our lives at every single stage. Doesn't matter how young we are, how old we are, God has a will for all of us. So first, in Proverbs chapter 3, three verse 5, trusting in God's will. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. First off, is that we need to be willing to obey God with a whole heart. It can't be half-heartedly or part-heartedly. Even 99.9%, .9%, it has to be 100%, a whole heart. Following God's will begins with a heart that is willing to follow. We have to be willing to follow God. It can't be just something like, okay, I'll go along with this. It has to be, yes, Lord, I'll do it. And many times it's, I don't know what we're, what we're going to be doing here. I don't know what's going on. But, Lord, this is where you're leading, so we'll obey. We don't have to know everything, but if we do know that God is leading us to a certain path, that is where he wants us to go. That's his will. We can't control our lives. He does. We need to commit our ways to the Lord. Commitment is something we need to do. And that's, again, that's something we do every day. We should do every day. From the littlest things to the biggest things. And actually, when we start with the smallest things in life, committing those to the Lord, naturally we will allow our bigger things in life, the bigger challenges, we will commit them to the Lord. You'll turn real quick to Psalms 37. We won't stay there very long. But Psalms 37, verse 5. Where David says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Here's that 
trust again. Trusting God, allowing Him to have full control. This is complete dependence, complete trust in God. When we trust in God, He brings His will to pass. Now, it doesn't always mean it's going to be what we want. It's going to be what His will is for us. When we trust Him, He'll bring things to pass. It says in Psalms 119, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When we're in God's word, studying His word, following Him, He shows us the path. One step at a time or a lot of steps at a time. But it's His will for us. We need to be willing to obey Him. But we also need to realize something else, is that man's understanding is flawed because of sin. Now this is something we all struggle with. There are times when we try to do things our own way. When we don't depend on the Lord, but rather depend on ourselves. When we lean into our own understanding. We'll turn real quick over to Romans. Romans chapter 1. This is a good example of explaining why man's judgment is flawed. And we're human too. I mean, we were born sinners. We're born with this in nature. We're not perfect. We can't make decisions on our own. And here's the reason why. Psalms 20, uh, sorry, Romans chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. This is talking about when men reject God and rely on their own wisdom. Because when they knew not God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, who came vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Basically, when man turns away from God to their own wisdom and understanding, and you see this in cultures that have nothing to do with God, they go further and further and further into things that are just foolish. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Things that God is not pleased with at all. I mean, we see this throughout the world. We see this in our own country. We see what happens when people turn their backs on God, rely on their own wisdom and understanding. And as Christians, although we are saved by grace, we can go into a habit of relying on our own understanding instead of God's. Even at times if we want to do what's right, sometimes we do tend to do it our way and not let God do it His way. That does happen. We've all done that. But when we trust in the Lord, depend on Him, He brings His will to pass. And when we understand His will and not lean to our own understanding and wisdom, then we are relying on Him completely. So trusting in God's will. So second, acknowledging God's will. Now, trusting and acknowledging can be two different things because we can know that God's there. We can know He's the Creator. But we also need to make sure we acknowledge Him in everything we do. Because we can know God, we can know His Word, but we also need to acknowledge that He's there and He has a purpose and plan for us. So verse, uh, verse 6, In all thy, the Proverbs chapter 3, sorry, In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Everything we do in life, we need to be willing to acknowledge God. Again, from the smallest things to the greatest things. To know what God's will is, we must seek Him and acknowledge Him. Again, in Psalms 37, commit thy way unto the Lord. Acknowledging what He has for us. And when we acknowledge His will, acknowledge that God has a plan, and when we acknowledge that we're not perfect, and we're relying on Him, trusting in Him, He brings His will to pass. Sometimes, automatically, sometimes, it takes a while. But that's because it's on God's timeline. And when God has a timeline, 
He doesn't change it. We have to be willing to accept his time will for us. If you'll turn real quick over to Psalms 25, verses 4 through 5. We're going to go back and forth quite a bit here to the Psalms. Psalms 25, verses 4 through 5. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Here, David is saying, show me what your will is, Lord. Teach me thy paths. Show me thy paths. Show me where you want me to go. And in verse 5, he follows up with, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. You know something? David acknowledged God in his life. He wasn't perfect, of course. He made mistakes. But he acknowledged God, and God led him in the will that God had planned for him. You have to remember, in David as a young man, he was anointed to be king one day. But he would not take the throne until God said it was time. In all the years that Saul, King Saul chased him around trying to kill him, David would not raise his hand against God's anointed king until God said it was time for that king to go. And of course, on God's time, I mean, King Saul did die. Sadly, he did die in battle because of the fact he rejected God and rebelled against him. But David did not become king until it was God's time. He waited on God's time, waited on God's will. But also, he acknowledged God's will for his life. And God directed his paths because David acknowledged God's plan for him. David realized he wasn't perfect. He didn't have the ability to be perfect. He knew he had to depend on the Lord and trust in him. And he acknowledged that God had a plan for him. So in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And third, relying on God's will. Now, of course, most of the time when we think Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, we just include 5 through 6. Again, I like to include verse 7 whenever I think about these verses, because this is something of a bit of a warning and a reason why. It's a warning of what happens when man relies on their own understanding. Kind of following up with the first two verses and then showing why. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Now, I mean, as humans, I mentioned before, we're not perfect, and oftentimes we rely on our own wisdom and understanding. When we do that, we run the risk of causing huge problems in our lives. I mean, we've all relied on our understanding at one point or another. We've all been wise in our own eyes. But when that happens, we can easily go into sin. We can easily go astray. And actually, this happened to one man in particular. In fact, the person who wrote these Proverbs by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. If you'll turn real quick to 1 Kings 11. We'll look just briefly at the wisest fool. And you're wondering why in the world I'm saying that? Because this person who wrote this was wise, but became very foolish. And of course, probably many of you know who I'm talking about, King Solomon. This is King David's son. Um, one of the most successful kings of Israel, and bring Israel at its premier glory, or premier majesty, you might say, at its, its golden age. Essentially, King Solomon ruled Israel in its golden age of the kingdom of its earlier days as a kingdom. But one thing that Solomon did, I mean, God gave him um, unbelievable wisdom and understanding because Solomon as a young man asked for wisdom when he became king as a young man. But when he got older, as you're going to see, he turned his heart away from God because he did things that began leading his heart astray. Particularly, in that day and age, kings 
would often marry um, like brides or princesses from, or royal family members from other kingdoms to keep peace relations. But in doing this, marrying like a thousand wives, I believe it was that, that many. I mean, you have to remember, I mean, King Solomon was the most powerful king at the time in the region. And people were sending like royal princesses of royal households from these pagan cultures to have peace between Israel and the culture of this other country, but at the same time, began leading Solomon's heart away. If you look at 1 Kings chapter 11, and we'll look at verses 4 through 9. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned his heart away after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of, of David his father. For Solomon went after Asheath, the goddess of the Zinionites, and after Aconium, the abomination of the Minionites. Now, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing some of these names, since some of these names are not easy to pronounce. <laughs> and here's something really sad. Here's something that a man who asked for the Lord's wisdom and guidance, this is how he summed up in his old days. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chermish, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moralik, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise he did for all of his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrifice unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. I'm going to actually read verse 10 here as well. And commanded him concerning this thing, they should not go after other gods, but he kept not which the Lord commanded. And you know something? If in knowing the history of the nation of Israel, the reason why after Solomon's death, why Israel was split into two nations, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Israel, which is called Judah, is because of Solomon's sin of turning away from God. That God split the kingdom. Ten tribes to the north, two tribes to the south. And he kept the two tribes to the south because God honored the promise he made to David that, that his descendants would be on the throne of Israel. But he punished Solomon because of his sin. And we don't know if Solomon ever got his heart right with God or not. I mean, Solomon wrote a lot of scriptures. He wrote Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Think about that. The wisest man in history who God gave wisdom to like no other man before or after. And he turned his heart away from God. He was wise in his own eyes. He didn't fear the Lord anymore. And he walked straight into evil. And that's a sad reality. I mean, sometimes there are Christians who do that. God wants us to not be wise in our own eyes. He wants us to fear him. Not out of, oh, what's he going to do today? No. And fearing the Lord basically means that we understand that God knows everything we think, say, and do, and one day we'll reward or judge accordingly. Not out of judgment or a heavy hand, but out of love. Rewarding us for what we did right to him, but also not rewarding us for what we didn't do. I mean, we do reap what we sow. God does love us. God loves us. But he also wants us to follow him completely. We were not perfect. But one of the things God wants us to do when we are wrong is get right with him. Acknowledging the fact that we are wrong, we are sinners, we've done wrong, but that we turn back to him. So be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You know, there's one other illustration I'd like to use real quick with this before we move on to the next point. There's one man in history, which in American history, I'm sure many of you have probably read about, 
Um, he's not the most well-known, but he's certainly uh, somebody who's significant in history. And actually, it's interesting because <clears throat> excuse me, this man in particular had a connection with my home church, the church I grew up at, Locust Valley. Not the church itself, but the man who founded it. Because in 1879, a man by the name of George Sigler, who was the pastor, first pastor at Locust Valley, um, helped found the church there. But in 1859, the 1850s, he was pastor of another church roughly about four miles away in Washington County, Maryland. And um, during that time, in 1859, there was a group of about 20 plus men who moved into a farm just about half a mile away from the church. And these men started coming to the church there. And Reverend Ziegler, he got to know the kind of leader of the group pretty well. Uh, at least well, he thought he knew him pretty well. The man said his name was Smith, John Smith. And he said that he and his men were there to prospect for iron ore and also buy cattle. And the equipment that came into the farm, these big heavy wagons, they said it was for that purpose. Well, time went on, and the leader of that group actually preached in the church, so did some Sunday school classes. But then in October of 1859, the congregation heard that there had been a raid at a town not far away known as Harper Spirit. And say that ring a bell right there? <laughs> And here I come to find out, this man and these men at the church there were the ones who did the raid. And the man's name, who said he was John Smith, his real name was John Brown. <laughs> Reverend Sigler and his men, they went over to the farm there to see what was going on. And they found some iron warning equipment, which there had been some of that, but that was a cover up. What they found instead in large abundance were rifles and pikes, basically spears. Of course, as we know, um, if you know American history, John Brown was an abolitionist who wanted to start a slave uprising in Virginia. Now, just based on this, and also from looking at John Brown's life, John Brown claimed to be a Christian. He read the Bible study God's word, but here's one thing. Although he wanted to end something that was wrong, which is slavery, in doing so, he committed multiple sins. And he was not sorry for what he did. What were some of the things he did? One, he lied to the people of the church he went to. He stole stuff that were not his. He actually had men murdered. When he was out in Kansas beforehand, he actually had five people who were from southern pro-slavery states murdered. I mean, you don't really hear about that much, but that was something he did on his orders. He himself didn't do it, but his sons and his son law were involved in that. It's just very sad. But also, John Brown had pride in his heart. He thought he was right. He was self-righteous. But in doing so, he did things that were against God's will. He thought what he was doing would be something God would approve of. But he did things that were against God's word. That God clearly says is sin. Why? Because John Brown was wise in his own eyes. He didn't fear the Lord, and he walked straight to people. He wanted to eradicated sin, he himself committed multiple sins. Reverend Sigler went to see John Brown before he was executed in December of 1859. And John Brown basically said he regretted nothing of what he had done. And we don't think of John Brown that light. But when somebody decides to do things their way against God's word, I mean, there are consequences. I mean, had John Brown waited and prayed um, to have something end, that which was wrong, which of course is slavery, he could have seen that come to pass in 1865 when slavery was outlawed in the United States. He could have seen that.
But instead, he did things his own way, wouldn't let God do his will. As a result, it cost him his life, the life of two of his sons, and one of his son in laws. He did not trust the Lord with all of his heart, and he leaned unto his own understanding. He did not follow God in all the ways that God had planned for him, but instead relied on his own wisdom and understanding. And he didn't let God direct him. He made his own paths. He was wise in his own eyes. He didn't fear God. And again, he walked straight to evil. This is why it's so important we need to memorize these verses to let God direct us in his will. So be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And then finally, we'll turn to Psalms 27, verse 14, waiting on God's will. Trusting in God's will, acknowledging God's will, relying on God's will, waiting on God's will. Sometimes the waiting part is the hard part. But sometimes as human beings, we do get impatient. And that's part of our human nature to get things done as rapidly as possible. But we have to understand God has his own timeline. And God's the one who writes final chapters. God's the one who brings things to pass in his timing and in his will. And his will is perfect because he's the one that planned it. So Psalms 27, 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You know, when we do have to wait on God in many times in our lives, you think of it this way, it's like coming up to a railroad crossing. And as you're coming up to the crossing, the gates come down, and a train comes through. And you're just waiting and waiting, Thinking, well, what if I drove very fast enough, back up just a little bit, then got a head start and jumped right in between uh, two cars and I get to the other side? I mean, you can automatically just think, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> but in our, but our walk with the Lord, sometimes we do that. If God has us waiting, sometimes we like to jump ahead or get ahead of God's will. And sometimes that can have disaster consequences. Or just sometimes it's embarrassing. We need to wait on Him. And while we're waiting, we pray and seek His will. And sometimes, I mean, God gives direct answers right away. Sometimes it takes a while. The three answers God always gives us is either yes, no, or wait. And again, waiting sometimes is the hardest of them all. Because we're sometimes stuck at one place or staying in one spot. We want to go forward. We want to do something else. But when God says, wait, he has a purpose. Sometimes that is pretty hard. But ultimately, he knows best because he loves us. He has a perfect will for us. And he gives us courage, though, to wait. And he shall strengthen thy heart. He strengthens our hearts when we wait on Him. And Psalm 27 is written by David, and he ends it with a repeating of what he just said. I mean, when we see a repeat of something in Scripture, that's important. That's important right there. It's very important to remember. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Waiting on His time and His will. So trusting in God's will, Acknowledging God's will, relying on God's will, waiting on God's will. I'm going to close here with one example. And this is actually one of the best examples I've heard about letting God have control of our lives. Just picture in your mind somebody getting into their car, driving down the road, and all of a sudden, the man in the car, he looks over and he sees somebody on the road. He, 
he looks for a bit like, I think I recognize that person. And he recognizes it to be a really important person. Somebody with huge significant importance. And he's um, kind of shaking his knees a little bit. He's honored to see this guy. I mean, wondering why he's walking along the side of the road. And he stops over and talks to him for a little bit. And he asks, oh, why don't you get in the car? And the important man, he says, no. And, he, and the driver said, why? What's the matter? The important person leans in and just says, I don't ride. I drive. Are you ready to let me drive? Put yourself in that driver's seat. You and me. The person on the outside asking, are you ready to let me drive? That's Jesus Christ. The great God and our Savior. Every day, we need to be willing to let him take over, to take the wheel. I mean, you can use any illustration right there. I mean, as if it were a boat or a ship on the ocean, let him steer it or driving a vehicle, or train, or whatever, or an airplane, you let God be in control of where that's going. We can't control where our lives are going. Only He can. We can only trust Him, acknowledge Him, rely on Him, and wait on Him. When we do all that, He brings His will to pass for our lives. So I'm going to ask you, are you ready to let him drive your life for you? Who is leading your life today? Is it God or you? That's something we need to think about every day. It's something we have to really think about every day and decide every day who's in control of our lives. Let's close with more than prayer. Our Heavenly Father, these are passages of Scripture that are very important. Every, every piece of Scripture is important, Lord, because it's written by you. And Lord, every piece of Scripture is important in many different ways. In this, Lord, we see that we need to daily look for you and seek you and acknowledge your will for our lives. Let you have control. But also, Lord, to wait on you. Lord, we pray that you help us to learn from examples of history from like Solomon, Lord, who was wise, who lived his life for you in his early days, but then turned his heart away from you. And also people like John Brown, who wanted to do right, but in reality, they did things that were wrong instead, because they thought they were right. Lord, help us to learn from these examples. Help us to learn to be people like King David, who waited for you and acknowledged your, your will for his life. And when he made mistakes, Lord, he got right with you. Lord, help us in our lives that when we do make mistakes or fall on our own path for you, uh, paths instead of following your path for us, help us to get right with you and go back to your will for us. I mean, sometimes it's not easy, Lord. I mean, it's not always easy following your will. We don't know that. But ultimately, Lord, it is best. We pray, Lord, to help us to follow in the right way, your way, because it's the only way, because you are the way. You are true and honest, and you are perfect for us, Lord, because you are a creator and our God. You love us, Lord. You sent your son to die for us. We pray, Lord, that our hearts and minds would turn to you always. In the littlest decisions in life and the big ones, let our hearts be focused on you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. <coughs>
sung in these hymns, dear Lord. We thank you for the preached word from Paul, and we thank you for allowing him to be here with us this day and be able to give uh, us part of your word, dear Lord. Very true words, dear God. And help us to trust and obey you more each day. Thank you for being here, dear Lord, with us. Guide us and direct us as we go <coughs> home. We pray that you would be with us again on the next meeting time. We thank you for all of these things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.